Okay, uh, let's have a class. So, uh, today we will do a review for the final exam. Thursday, uh, Amy will do a special fungi lab. If you, ca uh, you come here, uh, we take the tennis recorder, we'll give you um, three points, uh, extra points. And her question for the fungi will be the extra points in the final exam. Okay. There is one thing I want to remind you is that we do have 20 points of a lab notebook report, a record. And you should have enough time to do during this break. And you don't forget, I have a lab book which is at the beginning of the eCampus, the PDF version. You can use it to finish your report, record. That will worth 20 points. And I encourage you to do, if you already did lab by lab, that is great. If you haven't done so, I still encourage you to do. Because during the final exam review, it is still good when you write every lab. Is that right? Like the purpose, experiments, uh, procedure, results, discussion, then you get a review by yourself. Now, of, of course, when I wrote on the blackboard today is an outline, but going through every single lab, it is important. And you feel free to use the material in this book. Okay, the PDF is on the top of the campus. That is 20 points, but that's the extra points you don't have to do. If you feel confident about you can do really well in the final exam, you don't have to do. Okay, it's a, it's a choice. We just don't want to help you, like the lecture. Uh, we do need you guys to help. And uh, by the way, the lecture this Thursday, uh, my PhD student, Corey Cole, will give a special talk about the poultry feeds, uh, microbial safety. And uh, it will offer you four points, extra points for attendance. Because I do see the real helps us graded. I do see the exam three, lots of people didn't do very well. And we need to encourage you to continue studying. Okay, so we offer you extra points for attendance. Okay, so that's, that's we, we, we don't want you to give up. You keep the pace and to finish the, <coughs> cross the finish line of this semester and I hope you do good. Okay, that's always a goal. So let's do the review. Let's start our last lab. That will be, that is lab uh, 16, which is microbial analysis of food. Okay, so you have your results already. You have your three plates. What we did is 10 to the power 1, 10 to the power 3, and 10 to the power of 5. And you can see obviously some of you did good, some of you didn't do very well. This is TNTC. Sometimes, is that right? Too numerable to count. Some of you have counts. Some of you, this guy is zero. You didn't see anything. And some of you in the middle, you may get like a, a number. So that's a number there. But it, it depends. Uh, some uh, products are really clean, uh, not too much microorganism. So let's give an example. I had a hundred CFU on this plate, on the 10 to the power of three. And I have a different products. How we do the calculation? The first one is a tomato. So remember how we did the, how we did the tomato. The tomato, we put a tomato inside and then how many we added? 50 ml, 0.1% neutron gloss. So, how we do it? How we do the calculation? We want to do the calculation is CFU per tomato. So what is the answer? The answer is relatively easy. We get 100. So that is 100 multiple by 10 power of 3 and a multiple by 50. 
So how many you get? 5 multiplied by 10 to the power of 6 CFU per tomato. And that is very easy because everything comes out from the tomato. Okay, so that's the first thing. Second, we did a hot dog. Okay, we did a hot dog. Remember, we put one hot dog inside and we shake 30 seconds. We add 100 ml 0.1% neutron broth. So for hot dog, we will care about is the surface area. Now how many it is? This is approximately 50 square centimeter. So what is the calculation will be? That will be 100 multiple by 10 to the power of 3 multiple by 100 <coughs> and divided by 50. So this is what you get. How many you get? Take this off, take this off, you get two. So there you get two multiplied by 10 to the power of five CFU per square centimeter. Okay, that's the second calculation. Now you have a product. Let's say you have a ground beef. That's a little bit different. So how we did it? We have a ground beef in a future bag. So messed it up. And we did a stomach for one minute, 30 seconds. And we add 100 ml, 0.1% neutral broth. And how many ground beef we added? I said approximately 25 grams. So what we are looking for here is CFU per gram. So how are we going to do it? Again, we're using this place. That will be 100 multiplied by 10 to the 3. Because it's homogenized, so the ground beef, 25 gram, and the 100 ml neutral gloss is mixed. So how are you gonna do? It's 100, add 25, divided by 25. That where the bacteria comes from. And this part equals five, is that right? That's 100 multiplied by 10 to the three, multiplied by 125, divided by 25, that equals 5 multiple 10 to the 5 CFU per gram. So that's a third calculation. And the fourth calculation, what is that? It's a chicken. So chicken carcass. So chicken carcass, how we did that? We had a chicken bag. And we put up one carcass there. And we add 200 ml 0.1% neutron bras. And the calculation is the easiest. Because the poultry is too large. So we're not going to know how to weight every single piece, single carcass's amount. So how we do? We were doing CFU per Ring snake. So what is that? That is basically CFU per ml. So that is simple. It's a hundred multiplied by ten to the three equals ten to the five CFU per ring snake. Okay, that's a calculation. Uh, by the way, what is CFU? Yeah, you should be very clear. Colony forming unit. So, this is important. 
the big chunk of the question in the final exam is for you to do the calculation. Okay, that's very important. Okay, so let's let's just split into here and make it clear. I'll just write on the top. This will be final lab exam review. Okay, what we did during the final parts of our lab, and I say the final exam of the lab is a little bit difficult. Why? Because we did spending a huge time talk about the biochemistry analysis. So we need to go over all these single by single, okay? So the big chunk is bio chemical analysis. So what we did, number one, we did three cube fermentation test. So how we did it, we add a bacteria inside in these three tubes. And what are those three tubes? Those three tubes are sugar, which is glucose, uh, dextrose, and uh, fructose. And sometimes we use sucrose, I forgot about that, but it's the same thing. Okay, what we find, we're using E. coli. <coughs> we find the E. coli is gas fermentation positive and acid fermentation positive. It is yellow color. That is our results. How do we know that? Because inside we add a pH indicator that is phenol red. And if you talk about phenol red at the pH 2, that's yellow color. At the pH 7, this is the original color at the pH 14, alkali environments, it is cherry red. Or it is a red to pink color. Okay, how do we know the gas positive? Because inside we had another tube. What's the name of this tube? Durin tube. And we find on the top, there is a gas bubble. That's why it is gas positive. <coughs> That's a review. Is that right? Now you have your own results. You did a spacena sort of things. But that's the first thing. Okay, what's the second thing we talk about? Urea test. And we mentioned about the urea is very important for special bacteria, HP, Helicobacterium pyrrhoeal. And uh, how we did it, we have a urea And if urea bacteria have a urea, will become, uh, sorry, ammonia and carbon di dioxide. Will become ammonia and the carbon dioxide. This carbon dioxide will be released. Okay, and this is weak alkali. Now, it should be showing you cherry red color. How do you know? Because inside there is a phenol red at Alkaline environments, they're showing you cherry red color. Now, this is for lots of the bacteria is important because this is buffering low pH at acid stomach environments. How low it is? pH 1 to 2. 
Okay, that is a very important. We talk about that. Um, we need to double check it to see the see the urease. I was being a little uh, confused about that. Maybe the maybe I did this urease is wrong. This is the, the structure. So you can go back to see all the notes. Uh, I may forgot about that one. If you can double check the urease as, as the, which bacteria here is positive? Citrobacter is positive. So that is a urea test. Okay. Next, uh, it, should not, it should be not this. That's urea. Citrobacter is positive, so that's the second one. So the one. What is the test we did? For one shot, three drop. SIM test. So what does SIM stands for? S sulfide. I indo byproduct of tryptophan. What is M means? Motility. And this test, you should be very familiar, is one step <coughs> is needle stab and one shot, three jobs. How do you know sulfide positive? It turns black colony because of metallic ingredient. How do you know indo positive? This is, I said, a very important. You add a one drop of a special reagent on the top, it is called. Back and it turns cherry red. An indo test is a very important test for E. coli. Is indo positive? Okay, how do you know motility test? This is type of easy. If you see, this is stay in the line, no motility. And if you see, the bacteria goes everywhere. This is motility <coughs> positive. Which bacteria is motility positive? In the lecture, we learned <coughs> Proteus vulgaris. Here is Citrobacter. However, we didn't see it. Is that right? We didn't see it. We didn't see it. Um, the results. Citrobacter also for this sulfide is positive. So that's SIM test. What's the first, what's the next one test? Phenylalanine. Phenylalanine. Deaminase test. So how we did that? When we do phenylalanine, the amines test is a phenylalanine slums. And we inoculate a bacteria there, like we did, strict inoculation. And we grow 35 degrees Celsius 24 hour. And what we find, we add a big reagent there. FeCl3. And it turns dark green color. I don't think we see it. We see light green color. It is possible. Which bacteria? Citrobacter. 
should be phenylalanine deaminase test positive. And the phenylalanine, we should be very familiar with that. H, go here. This is phenyl. Al alanine. And uh, we should be right. Wait a second, we should write CH2, then go top, will be like this. Is that right? So the aminase, when this guy is go down, take it out, this part is phenopyrovate or phenopyrovic acid. Okay, that's phenylalanine test. What else we have? Catalase test. So what is catalase test? We have hydrogen peroxide. If bacteria has catalase, what are they gonna do? It will break down, become water and oxygen. And this basically is, we say, bubble ring. Now we have two things we can do. We did on the glass slides. We also can direct it dumping to the other plates. And I said in the lecture, this test is important because staphylococcus is positive versus streptococcus is negative. And we also did the unknown number two. Lots of you did a good job. You find a staphylococcus, you find a streptococcus, we use a catalase test. But keep in mind what we say. Never do on blood agar. It could be a true or false for you. Is that right? That's simple. Can we do that on the blood agar? True or false? Two points. It does not mean every question is difficult. Sometimes we give you a simple question just to let you test. Okay? That's catalyst test. Next one. Oxidase test. And this is the one we say the electron transport chain. I'm not going to draw it. Okay? It's too much. So electron transport chain, when they transfer cyto, chroma, C, go to oxygen, this rely on this enzyme. So how we did it, uh, we basically use, on the agar plates, we are adding the reagent. And once you see kind of like blue color, it is positive. Which bacteria is positive? We didn't do it in the lab, but you should know in the lecture. Yes? Neisseria, is that right? Neisseria species is positive. Neisseria gonorrhea, Neisseria meningitis. Well, we didn't find it very well in the lab because of spermidic contamination, and this has to be done within one minute. Because I showed you, if in more than one minute, everything turns positive. So catalase test. What else we have? A very important, interesting test. I-M-V-I-C test. So what is I? Indo. What is M? You still will make it wrong. I'm Add a star there. What is this? Meso red. This is not a motility, okay? S I M, this M is motility. This is not a meso red. What is V? Vocus per scale. We'll just write BP easy. Citrate. And I said that this is a very important test. Why? You still remember? We had E. coli, 
We have the Enterobacter. It is very important and very interesting. I am VC test. What's the results looks like? Positive, positive, negative, 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 positive, and positive. So this is that looks like this. Sticky ends. Okay, that's I am VC test. Did we miss some test here? We see we did a lot of them. Uh, we did a lots of tests. Okay. What else are we missing? And I said we had a bacteria enzymatic reaction. So which means bacteria has a enzyme can use different the other nutrition resource besides glucose. And what we have? And we said one side we added E. coli, the other side we added Bacillus subtilis, on one side we added E. coli, the other side we added Staphylococcus aureus, it's from my lab, remember? This side we add E. coli, the other side we add Bacillus subtilis. What are the three algae we are using? This is which, which one? Skin, milk, algae. And we say transparent zone surrounding the Bacillus subtilis. So this is guy has Pro yes, which is caseinase. Okay, what are the second one? This is testing lipase. And we see this is transparent zone. So lipase test the positive. What is the other other's name? Sprit blue agar. How about the last one? We are using starch agar. Okay, for starch agar, I said, what's the trick is in? You need a pore iodine. There is two results. If iodine is brownish color, it is negative. Because starch is still there. If it's colorless, it is positive. Okay, which one is positive? This is the sun. Okay. That's a very important what we talk about is a biochemistry reaction. We add up together, have eight. What else are we missing? What are we are missing? There is a two lab section we really like. Is clinical. I cannot use this. Uh, use this. Clinical labs. What are the two clinical labs? I said everybody get a urine sample. You don't want to do it, is that right? So urine test. What is the first important thing talk about urine test? We had a UTI, urinary tract infection. It's called a dysuria, difficult to pee. Which bacteria is most important? E. coli, a urinological E. coli. Okay, we just say E. coli is the number one. What is the standard? More than a hundred thousand CFU per ml. When you put a dipstick into a urine sample, what are the three markers you are looking for? Number one is what? Is a white blood cell? Is that right? S 
her race. Number two, what you're looking for? Red blood cell. Number three, what are you looking for? Nitrite. So those are three markers. When three markers are positive, either one of them, what you do? What are the others we are plating? We did a strict plating right here. We did a strict plating right here. We call polytertive test. And then you find that could be pink colony, and this is you find a transparent colony. What are those? This agar is blood agar. What is the other agar? Makanti agar. Okay, if I have this agar plate comes out. Remember we use this, we do this, then we horizontally. Okay, I have a colony there, and then I need you to count. Okay, how many colony there? If I get six, if, if I total, I get sixty. Is this UTI? Probably not. Why? This is a standard. The total is sixty multiplied by ten to the three. This is larger than that. Is that right? So, no. U T I. Just give you an example. So that's a urine test. What else we did? We just submitted our lab report number one, which is throughout culture. So throughout culture, I want everybody to do is from your tonsil area, <coughs> and then you streak plating. Strict plating and the wound to agar. What is the agar place? That is a blood agar. And on the blood agar, you see those beta hemolytic pinpoint colony. Now, what we did is special. Remember this small candle? We're using a candle jar. So why are we using a candle jar? Because we want to create micro aerophilic environment. That is approximately two to five percent Oxygen. That's a soil culture. Is that correct? Okay, that's very important. I will have a question to test you whether you did in the uh, in the in the testing or not. Okay, so we will be combined with your blood agar results, your catalyst test. Do you tell me it is staphylococcus or streptococcus? Okay, we're gonna have that question for you. It's a little bit difficult, but you still can figure it out. As an exam, they always will have one or two questions will be a little bit challenged. What else we did? So remember, there is a day we had agar place. This agar very special. Mula Hilton agar. MH agar. What we did? We did this, is that right? We did the horizontal layer. So we use a dispenser to add a big chunk of a stick. This is called Kirby Boa test. And before we do this, we need to make sure our bacteria we added on here is fit a standard. It's a standard called 0 0.5 Mach Farland standard. What this means? This means the population is around 10 to the power of 8 cells per ml. Is that right? 
And uh, we're going to have a table for you. Is that okay? You can fill the table. Um, based on your results, what we give to you could be uh, intermediate, could be resistant, could be susceptible. And uh, for example, if I have a penicillin, we are getting like, uh, this is like 13, this is like 15, this is like 20. If you have this zone, penicillin 10, you get uh, 22 millimeter. What this means? Which means you're gonna pick this one. And uh, this pathogen, E. coli, is susceptible. Susceptible to penicillin at 10 milligram concentration. Okay? <coughs> That's very important. Okay, what else do we have? Uh, turn around. If not enough, we're going to turn around. We'll go this way. Almost done. We talk a lot of topics. What else we did? <coughs> we have two left. Haven't talked yet. Haven't reviewed yet. One thing we will do additional lab on Thursday with Amy Massini. And we talked about, very brief about the pathogenic fungi. So what we did, we using a very special dye. What's the name? Lacto cotton blue. Is that called lacto cotton blue? What we find, we want to see, it could be penicillin, or it could be as hydrolysis. Or it could be riser pass. Is that right? One of them. And then we move on to another special talk. <coughs> yes. Pound water. Bacterial analysis. What's a pound of water bacterial analysis? We mentioned about EPA regulation, zero tolerance. And what else we talk about? We talk about coliform versus fecal coliform. What's the difference? Incubated temperature. This is 35 degrees Celsius versus 44.5 degrees Celsius. What else we do? Remember this guy? It looks like pink. Is that right? So what, after incubation, what you find? You see those red dots, lots of you? Coliform. And then what else do you find? Some will find these gas bubble. Generic E. coli. And then you add them together. Total coli. That's the end. Basically, it's the outline for you to study. Okay? <coughs> That's very important. But what's the important thing? What's the key for study? Yes, file chemistry test. It is very, very important. And also, what is the best study material? Is your lab notebook? So I would encourage you, when you have time, 
um, this week or even come back from the Thanksgiving holiday like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you can work together to finish your lab notebook record. Remember, it is a lab notebook. What is it? What is the example? Let me, let me show you something. If I still have, okay. Uh, let me still have some. Let me give you an example. Do you still have a lab notebook somewhere? Yeah, I want the real to give me a good example. Okay. What's the rule for these extra points? This is called a lab notebook. This is called a couple piece of paper. You know the difference? Okay, if this you give to me, you will get some extra points. If you give me a couple piece of paper, it won't. Okay, that's a rule. Why? Because we want you to have a good system, a, mem a memorization or understanding the whole knowledge system in your mind. So if you, even if you haven't done yet, you can go ahead to work right now. This is our previous students did a really good job, put it there. Okay, I encourage you to do because when you review all these, look at the, the menu, it's a good study system by yourself. And also my graduate student, Carly Long, will offer another additional review on Tuesday or Wednesday, right after Thanksgiving holiday. The exam will be on Thursday, okay? So the Thursday, you should come here to give you lab notebook. If you want extra points, you just lay out here and I'll grade it for you. Okay, so that's a rule. You don't have to. If you say that I'm very good about all these, then there you go. Uh, plus we have extra points for the attendance on Thursday. So that gives you plenty of the uh, buffering zone. I just say buffering zone to make you uh, get a good score which is you are happy about it okay so that's all we have